welcome back to Dragonborn Industries, where Richard and I are going to be painting today, but we're also fighting some weird tech issues on our end. Hopefully, you can all see me, because I'm the star of the show here. You are the star. I am, I am a lift, lifter. Uh, do let us know, Twitch, because I can see you all there in chat already, whether or not we're visible, because Richard can't see me, but I can see him, yet on my um, Streamlabs, I can see everything. So... I'm just trying to load up on Twitch to see if I can see you, because it's very off-putting. It's weird, isn't it? Very weird. Cool. Everybody in Twitch can see me, and everyone in Twitch can see you. Everything seems fine. I'm assuming... Can, can they see, see and hear me okay? Any issues, or...? Div says I'm very special, so he gets it. Uh, all good for Fluffy, all good for Miss Lounge, all good for Lord of Cats. I see two stars, he says. Thank you, Jayhan, Lord of Cats. Uh, yeah, ZG says it seems fine, so... Yeah, I guess there is just some weird thing with Discord today where Richard isn't allowed to see me. So, he doesn't get to see what I paint until the end of the show, I guess. <laughs> there we go. Well, I'm going to have to deal with the lag between Twitch. Uh, just have it on quietly in the background, just like on mute, so that you can like see me ten seconds later. But we're yeah. back with the chaos that is fucking Dragonborn Industries and Warrior Prince 3D at the moment, because it's... Whoa! It's all been crazy, crazy, crazy. And I guess I'll start by saying hello to chat. I hope you guys are well, and I hope that everybody is doing fine. I hope you've had a great week, and I hope that um, you are all in a great place. And thank you so much for coming back to us week by week for what is now episode 38 of Painting Up the Monster Manual. We're on the Glabraju, which is another of the fiends, as we seem to be working through the fiend section of the Monster Manual at the moment. Page 58, I believe it is. And these things are pretty fun. I like them as an NPC because of their lore and we'll talk about that in a moment. But they are able to take care of themselves as well. But firstly, I guess I'm going to hand over to Richard to tell us who he is, who Warrior Prince 3D are, where you can find them and what kind of things you can get in their one-stop shop. So, I am Richard, Warrior Prince 3D. I am your one-stop shop for all your 3D printing needs. Um, we are a 3D printing shop for anything from either 32mm tabletop, 28mm, uh, any sort of tabletop you're after, 75mm collectibles, uh, moving up to statues, uh, cosplay pieces, other little bits and pieces, and anything I can pretty much fit on the, print, fit on the printer. You can find me on Etsy, Instagram, Facebook, over here with Dragon Ball Industries, over with the badges, uh, on the street corner. You can now find me at Happy Piranha. Yeah. Um, and yeah. Um, easy going. So if there's anything you wish you need, think you need, or even if you can't see it on the store and there's something you have got an idea for, or a character you think, I need a mini for this, give me the parameters, drop me a message, I can do my best to find out whatever I can find. And that is the perfect explanation of who Richard is. He says every week here on the show, but first, you missed something, Richard. What did I miss? You missed that there's a new place that people can find us, apart from Happy Piranha for you. I said last week we've got an announcement, and oh boy do we, because what's this? Oh, it's Painting Up the Monster Manual, the live show. Look at this when I get the pictures moving because they're locked in place. Oh, we've got a live show. This is happening on the 17th of August at 1pm on the main stage at Falmouth Comic Movie and Anime Festival, we're going to be doing the Pit Fiend live. Fucking terrifying. Which is... Ah! I'm so excited because we've been talking to this venue for a little while and hopefully Rich and I both can have our own little stalls there. But also, there's two Dragon Ball Industry shows. This one's on the Saturday and then the Sunday we've got the live show for Starfinder. But yeah, and it timed out that we were able to do such a huge monster on that particular week that we were like, you know what, it's just fate. We've got to do this one. So yeah, we have got a pretty chunky mini lined up for this one to try and get it done in that hour. But yeah, we, we're taking the show to the stage, baby! I'm still freaking it. Can't believe it's going to happen. It's, oh, it's happening, buddy. But let's have a look at some of the things Richard's got in the store this week. 
So right, so this, this is going to be the fun part with the delay because I can't see what you're putting up. This one is the Dwarven Legacy. Ah, right, so this is this month's cast and play release. Um, I will be getting some more pictures up and some of the videos on the TikTok channel where you can find me. Ooh. Um, and yes, cast and play, as always, a beautiful set. Do you know what? I really like the halfling in this one. It's got the frying pan on the top there. But it's also... Cool, isn't it? Yeah, and then the, the base on the top right that's got the minecart track. Things like I love, that. I love cast and play bases because they... Every set, the, the base is generic. They do, they do a set of bases for the set. And there's one of the magic sets. It's like a magic circle. And basically, I've blown them up and I'll use them as coasters. So I'll print them out as coasters. That's awesome. That's very, very awesome. I really like those, and I agree. I think the uh, cast and play bases are incredible. I, I tend to find that I use a lot of bases from them, and also like other people like loot and stuff for a lot of minis. Uh, then we've got this. This is the Glabrazu from today's show, which we're going to be painting up. Uh, do you know where this is from, Richard? It's got a lovely little sun crest in the bottom left corner. Um, yeah, I, I, this time I came prepared. I got up the page, so... This is from a uh, an artist called Realm of Parts. Nice. Uh, I, I found them on uh, my mini factory when I was searching for all the uh, the lovely demons. The sculpt on this is beautiful. Yeah. I've so, got to say, nice attention to detail, and um, I think it's just it's just such a beautiful thing. The base. I think I did a different base on this one. So me? did I. <laughs> I did my own base on this one. That's the only drawback on it, but yeah, wonderful sculpt though. I'm terrified about the face because it's so small in comparison to the rest of the mini, but... Yeah, and it's, do you know what, it's, this is one of the minis that I was like, I in wish we could use airbrushes. I'm going to dry brush the shit out of this one, but let's have a look at this fancy looking sword wielding hero here from... No, uh, this is obviously one of the newer releases from Bulkmance. They're working their way through the Baldur's Gate 3 characters and Will is now released. I'm looking forward to printing this guy because at the moment I'm down two printers and I am printing turtles. So yes, you are. looking forward to getting him on next and I love their sculpts. It is indeed easy to play with a verse chat. I will catch up with you in a second. This is awesome. I love this. This is the uh, Miniatures of Madness um, diorama as well that's come in. And I love how they've coloured that with that OSL coming from that lantern. But that Leonin there, that Lion Man, is so incredible. Freaking awesome. I love. I need to get their stuff up in the store because I've, not, I've still not got any, any of the bits up in the store from them for, for, for Etsy. Why do it? And, Oh, it's, I, you know, I've got so much to upload, it's unreal. But we also now have uh, the next one's from... Well, this is another bulk man, so this is um, obviously... Uh, well, I can't think of her name. Uh, somebody, as easy just put, SHOT! And then we have right there. Oh, and this is the night, yeah. Demon wings out. Horns up. Awesome. Yeah, very, very awesome stuff. And, yeah, so all of those things are coming to Richard's store. Or should be coming to Richard's store here and now. But he's he's, just, he's had his feet up all week. He's done nothing. And yeah, <laughs> I actually want to do a special shout out to um, Zizi as well. Because what you can see there next to Richard is a personalised Funko Pop that they did for both Richard and I. And mine's down in the house because I'm terrified about having it up here in the studio because it gets so damp. So mine lives on a high shelf where I can see it in the kitchen all the time. So thank you so much. That, like the little message on the back and the whole thing is just stupendous. It's amazing. Thank you so much. But I'm going to dive into the chat. Prized possessions, that is. Yeah. Uh, my entire Starfinder group broke down. And then you've got it right there next to... Apocalypse. But I'm going to quickly jump into chat because I saw a lot of chatting going on. Make sure we haven't missed uh, anything. As I say, I've, I've actually got chat up and um, Absalom Dak uh, posted, uh, Hey guys, I have the most amazing Balrog Pit Fiend figure you've ever seen. If you want to paint it, I can send it to you. Oh, that's really sweet. Um, I think, unfortunately, we've already worked out a Pit Fiend for it and is on the printers as we speak. However, um, I mean, Dak, if you're coming down to Cornwall, <laughs> paint along with us, bring it down. Um, 
Yeah, that's really sweet of you and really kind. Um, I'm gonna let Richard look at chat today, then, since he's got it up. Uh, it's made of metal. Heavy. Um, but let's talk about the Gabrazu. So, before we jump into any combat or any painting today, I'm gonna bring up a few things just so we can chat about it, because this is a an interesting creature. All the devils and fiends, you know, they're not just monsters. They have an intelligence. They have a... Um, a reason for what they are and the way they've come about things. And the Galabrazu in particular, although it looks like this fierce, crazy, strong, badass lobster man, which it is, it actually prizes itself on deals and trickery and on basically luring people into ruins or into a false sense of security, even people who summon it, and then it being like, and guess what? now I'm gonna kill you. It is a tricky little bitch. And it's interesting because we don't, we're not really gonna have time to showcase today that side of it, I don't think. It's gonna be a case of this is gonna be one of those pit fights again. But what you can do with them, and something that I've personally done with them in my own campaigns, is have them as emissaries of higher demons and have them offer contracts and have them trying to work their way up through the demon ranks and I find that they are a great source of both combat and also roleplay. Have you used them in your campaigns Richard? I have never used one, no. Fair enough. Uh, they are, I find them a lot more fun as an NPC, I will say that now. Um, that can then hold its own in a fight, but... It's, it's one of those things, with my campaign, um, the way it's was going, is going, how's going, demons have only just started coming into it. Yeah. Because of events that have occurred, so um, it's quite nice because I've been getting some quite interesting ideas to adapt and change things, and uh, like you said, I want those interesting NPCs. So I think it'll do nicely for a few interesting encounters. Uh, they absolutely will. So I'm going to talk about um, the stat block first, because this is a CR9 creature. So although it's not the highest of things that Richard has faced on this show here, when we look at this show in terms of we usually base it off a level 3 character and a party at that sort of level, this thing would be a problem. Uh, Richard, have you, by the way, got a level 3 character ready to go? I have indeed. Perfect. Uh, today, I, I will admit, I had to edit my level 3 random generated character because I felt that I literally got so unrighteously shafted, it was unreal. Are you telling me so, that the player has been editing their stats without talking to the GM? Yes, basically. Oh, I don't like that. No. <laughs> I will give you a for instance. Um, I swapped two stats around because it just rankled me. Oh, so really? my, my random character, I have swapped its intelligence and its strength. Okay. So what I rolled up was a Earth Genasi wizard. <laughs> was it strength high and its intelligence low? It had an 18 strength and a 6 intelligence. <laughs> when the barbarian wants to take a class in, uh, a class dip into a wizard, basically. Yeah. <laughs> and to a point of, I could have one prepared spell. Wow. I mean, you could have gone with that. That would have been hilarious. It would have been, but I'm going to get my shit kicked out of me as it is, so I figured I may as well at least try and stand a chance. Okay, so... Earth Ganassi Wizard, uh, what's your name? Um, Disgitchi. Disgitchi! Um, I'm never gonna remember that. Uh, so... Uh, call me, call me Dis. Dis! Um, let's talk about the stat block before we jump into any painting. So, we are looking at the big three first. Armor class, 17 natural armor. I think for a CR9 creature, that's about average. I think at level 9, if you're not hitting 17 to 25, You've been shattered Shit. by your stats. <laughs> um, hit points, 157. It a tank. So it's already up on those, and that's the average. So with that, it could be, though, 15 D10 plus 75. Yeah, that's like 225, I think, uh, 
quick glance estimate maths. Uh, the actual stat block itself is fucking ridiculous. Uh, we are looking at a strength of plus five, dex of plus two, con of plus five, intelligence of plus four, wisdom of plus three, and a charisma of plus three. This thing has no negatives. It is high on strength, high on intelligence, high on constitution. Uh, and then its damage dealing potential is ridiculous. Uh, so, its real problem is its magic, and we'll get to that in a moment, because it is a spellcaster. But it's multi-attack, it makes four attacks, because it has four arms. So, uh, two with its pincers and two with its fists. Alternatively, it can make two attacks with its pincers and cast a spell. It doesn't have to make an attack to make an attack. It can cast a spell and make an attack. That's ridiculous. That right there is two monsters rolled into one on one turn. That's ridiculous. And like the other side of that is at least it doesn't have legendary actions. That's its only saving grace for a player there. But it's uh, pincers plus nine to hit with a 10 foot reach. That's not fun. And then it's also got 2d10 plus 5 bludgeoning damage. If the target is medium or smaller, it's grappled. And it can grapple two targets with both of its pincers. So it's a tank that can stop you and then cast spells on you. It's not a great thing. It's fists, it's little tiny boof that it's got on its lower torso. We're looking at uh, five foot reach, plus nine to hit. There are only 2d4 plus two on its little feeble spellcaster arms. But that alone is pretty bonkers. When we start looking at the spells, oh boy, the, uh, the Glabazu spellcasting ability is intelligence. Its spell sig is 16. Uh, it can innately cast the following spells requiring no material components. Darkness, detect magic, dispel magic. Cool. Not very offensive, but useful. Once a day, it can cast Confusion, Fly, and Power Word Stun. Power Word Stun. Power Word Fun? Yeah, and it has resistance on all, but it has advantage on all saving throws against spells and other spell-like effects. This thing is... Oh, hit hard. Yeah, exactly that. So... Let's, let's throw this down into that little pit, into, uh, old... I forgot the name of, um, the Demon Prince. Um, Grass, uh, Grass Soul Demon Pit, where, who oh, once more we're fighting in the pits. My trusty Glabrezu versus Gas. And, whoo, this huge lobster claw clacking clicking monstrosity with these legs with a bowed backwards almost like a goat in places just walks out casually as this you stand there i think maybe wand in hand <laughs> stop bitch stop oh with your staff in hand as you shit your pants and you roll initiative for me please so, 11. 11, and I got a 13 plus. Have you started the timer? I have started it now. You've got one hour to go. Uh, let's have a look at this. Uh, Dex plus two, so I got a 15. Uh, I just want to talk about some of the saving throws. Strength and con plus nine, wisdom plus seven, charisma plus seven, damage resistances, pretty much all of them. And yeah. Insane, I've just seen that. Yep, it's fucking insane! Yeah, uh, just as I think you two should swap characters, Rich play the pit fiend and you the hero. Um, there's no heroics in this one, this is gonna end badly for him. <laughs> and I'm gonna start by dry brushing a load of corn red all the fuck over this mini. How are you going with this? I have mixed corn red with a contrast medium. Oh, Are you going for a solid colour? Uh, I'm going to go over solid, and then I'm going to be doing a bit of dry brushing and highlighting. So, I've done my own base for this one. I've just thrown some slate bits onto um, the a standard WizKids base there, a nice little flat one. And I'm going to try and get this red sand 
underneath it as well. But because the actual glabrazo is mostly red, I'm going to attack all of that with a heavy dry brush of corn red. And then I'm going to come up to a army paint of pure red. And then I'm going to try and use some flesh tones for the highlights of the glabrazo's red. Orange highlights on the sand. And then I'm going to try and get that white down the middle that is the rest of the colouring on this mini. I'm hoping that most of this will be dry brush and highlight. But I guess it's going first though as we begin this epic encounter. Oh shit, yeah, I need to do that video. I realise I've got epic encounters sat next to me and I haven't um, <laughs> uploaded the unboxing yet. Uh, so, uh, go go power word, says Lord of Cats. Um, let's have a look at... Oh, what's it gonna do? Oh. Can you make me a... No. Yeah, yeah, you can. Uh, you're gonna make me a will saving throw, please. A wisdom save? Yeah, I'm thinking of Starfinder. You have a wisdom saving throw. I've been playing a lot of Paizo publications recently. Fuck's sake, I've got five. Oh! So, you, what, it doesn't... There's no magical components. There's no... Champ, I think this is why it gets you, is you don't see it casting a spell. There's no visual, there's no verbal, there's no semantic, and you just feel it in your mind. And it just, in this horrid voice, just says, scramble, and your mind is scrambled, and you are confused. So, yeah, I just need to make sure how long this lasts for. Uh, so, the spell assaults and twists a creature's mind, spawning delusions and provoking uncontrolled actions. Each creature in a 10-foot radius sphere, connect, centered on the point you choose within range, must succeed, yada yada yada. Uh, an effective target can't take reactions and must roll a d10 at the start of each of its turn to determine. At the end of its turns, an effective target can make a wisdom saving throw to succeed at the effect. So it actually doesn't need to do anything else. And you just hear it laughing, and the crowd is like, I grasped this demon prince. <laughs> Such a feeble mind. Already it has succumbed to my general gabrezu. Uh, I'm going to then leave it where it is, about 30 foot away from you, and I'm going to end my turn there. You'll go, this. Right, so what does the confusion do to me? So, you need to make... Well, you need to roll a d10, please. D10. Yes, please. Um, D10 rollies. Uh, nine. Okay. <laughs> the creature can act and move normally. Oh, thank fuck for that. So describe to us how you shake off this confusion for this round. Okay, I um, shake my shorts around just so that my story loops doesn't get in the way. Um... All I can do. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> okay. I cast Ray of Enfeeblement. Cool. Um, you tell me what I need to do. <laughs> um, How's it look? Let's cinematic your quick death. Say again? Let's cinematic your quick death. How how does it look when you shake this off and um, you... Oh, so as I sort of shake this off, I turn around rising up, um, the necrotic energy coalescing around my hands as I warp it into a spell, and I shoot out with all my might at this giant gabrazu and I miss it completely. Oh yeah? Nice. Yep. I think, like, it's on target. Well, and 8 doesn't hit it. No, because does it fuck? <laughs> um, I think, like, the spell's on target, and you just watch it roll its two shoulders back on the right, Neo-style, and just, like, its head stays looking at you and it's just in your mind it is just laughing as that confusion seems to get worse and worse anything else apart from casting a spell on your turn um i'll run uh and you yeah just run 30 feet in the other direction oh you can uh you can make a wisdom saving throw No. 
I think as you run, this red sand of this pit that you're in, more of these kind of brazus and tentacles seems to like come up at every like direction you go. And it's almost like you don't know if it's real, if it's part of some spell, but yeah, you are properly confused. And it is going to, what's its movement? It's only got 40 feet. You'd be about 60 foot away from it. Well, oh yeah, I suppose it didn't move that to start. It didn't, know. So let's have a look at Power Word Stun. <laughs> Fucking hell, this is an eighth level spell. Um, it moves 30 feet up so that you are 30 feet away and like it can see that you're confused and the crowd's starting to get a bit silent now realising there's probably not going to be much sport in this and in your mind you hear again ah, stun and then out in the arena these two lobster like claws clack together making this tremendous bang and yeah, I need you to make me a um no. Let's see. What horrific saving throw is it? I actually think it might not even be a fucking saving throw. You speak the word of power that can overwhelm the mind of one creature you can see within range, leaving it dumbfounded. The target has 150 hit points or fewer, it is stunned. Do you have 150 hit points? Uh, no. No? Oh God, I wish. I have a whole 27. Okay. You are stunned automatically, as well as confused. Uh, um, fuck. <laughs> so stunned. Stunned! Uh, a stunned creature is incapacitated, see the condition, can't move, and can speak only fa uh, falteringly. The creature automatically fails strength and depth saving throws, and attack rolls against the creature have advantage. Um... It just, you are nothing. You should not have come here. Uh, it's your go, you are incapacitated. Um, you don't get to make a save against it. <laughs> you are fucked. Yeah. Uh, it's, duration is one minute. I'm very oh, no. fucked. Sorry, so hang on. Like, that's my go. Uh, let me just double check that one, because I think I closed it off. So I'm gonna double check power when it's done. Uh, Duration is instantaneous. One action. School of enchantment. Oh, uh, no. You get to make a constitution saving throw at the end of your go. So your turn is spent incapacitated. But you do get to make a save. Con. 14. It save. fails, I'm afraid, my friend. DC 16. Um, to which end it will move the 30 foot up to you. Oh. I mean, I could have cast Fly on myself, but I don't think I need to. Let's do the four attacks, shall we? I have advantage on all of these. First one, with the pincers. It does this before it's... You can feel it coming up to you, but it's not quite there. At ten foot away, the first claw comes out. Both 18s on the dice, which I think is probably going to hit a wizard with a plus nine. Yeah. So, uh, let's rectify that one first. d and on dice roller. 18 points of bludgeoning damage and you are grappled it has advantage on the second claw and this one grabs you at like the thigh the first one the second one comes in to grab you at the torso that is a 13 plus 9 yep yeah. that is 18 points of damage dead I presume you're down cool and yeah. then the tooth at this at this point it goes to stop pulling your body apart as the little kind of claw comes in and they've got these sharp little talons on them and they're trying to dig into your soft bits and try and get your innards out and disembowel you. That's an 11 plus 9 for a 20 on the first one. Yep. Going to hit because you are downed. That is an auto crit. So that is uh, 8, 9, 10, plus 9. That's 19 points of damage. That's not quite over your max, is it? Yep. And the second one, oh, both low though. It is... A unconscious, it is a 3 plus 9 for an 11. Uh, no, I got a 12. The next one, it sort of gets in its own way. At the start of your go, as the crowd's like, Kill him! Kill him! Um, you get to make a death saving throw. 
Well, I'm down two already. Yep, this is it. Alright, <laughs> uh, let me just do the damage appropriately. So, damage. Uh, failure. Failure. Roll a d20. <laughs> Roll a three. Um, you know in Shaun of the Dead, when the zombies rip apart uh, the guy limb by limb and also like take his guts out in the yeah. pub? So this is essentially what's happening to this earth, Ganassi. It's like stone and dirt from your skin starts to rip. Then the inside where this human-like material is, this ichor and sinew, is just stretched and pulled until you start hearing your own limbs being snapped, all the ligaments, and then you just black out. And the crowd is just like, woo! As the Glabrazi just throws it into the air and uh, showers in a in your blood. And Slayer plays. It's like, -da 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 as raining blood comes out all over the place. And Richard dis the uh, level three <laughs> wizard Janathi is dead. Um, I mean, you know I, don't, I don't think there would have been a single character I could have rolled. At level three, no. At level three, that could have lasted more than three rounds. No, I don't think so either. And I think that um, while I go off to go find my orange paint, oh, it's down for, um, or my brighter red paint, the, this makes for a horrible, horrible creature at such low levels. Which, obviously, you are, so it's not fair. But, against a party of maybe level fives and upwards, actually... You know what? I think they could still even struggle. If you, if you, especially if you don't have a savvy party. And that's the thing. Level five to two, level five to sort of eight, it's going to be very hard. And if they don't know mechanics of a game, uh-oh. Level nine upwards, I'd be amazed if they... And I might put one of these in a buff version. <laughs> I love that every time you face one, you're like, yeah, I could buff that up. Yeah. <laughs> it just... it's, that, it's, that, it's that thing I hate. Um, it's the age old thing. I think at level 20, there should be a fucking orc or, 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 or goblin out there somewhere that's going to be a tough nut son of a bitch infused with demon piss. You know, it is going to be a thing that can go for someone. So, now this is the thing, because, like, you're playing in a Paizo publication, I'm playing a Paizo uh, homebrew thing. Paizo do this. And I'm not, like, saying everyone jump from D&D &D and stuff, but, like, there are, like, goblin kings that are, like, CR20 that have breath weapons. They have fucking ridiculous uh, auras around them that cause confusion, ridiculous hit points, and then also, like, crazy stats, and it's fucking hilarious. Because I think at a certain point in D&D, &D, your characters are basically immortal. Yeah, and I, I, I do dislike that, because I don't think the fact that if something's lived for, you know, God knows how many years and actually gone out and fought things and stuff, there's no reason why stuff can't be a little bit more than it should be. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Dib says, now swap characters and play again. <laughs> no, wash and repeat, same result. Mm. I mean, that's up to you if you want to, but because uh, I'd kill it. Yeah. <laughs> no, there's no way we could beat this thing. It's absolutely ridiculous. Uh, I am now actually only putting on my second layer of paint because um, oh, I was too distracted killing Richard. So I'm going to throw on some pure red from the army painter, paint range from the army painter. And this is going to go again all over my base and all over the Glabrazu. And then I will be using hopefully some different colours for some highlighting in a second. How are you getting on with yours? Uh, so the contrast corn red mix has gone over quite nicely. It is going to be now the scary part of is the fucker going to dry? But we'll see how that goes. Um, if I'm looking correctly at the image, it's got brown feet. Yeah, it's like uh, weird goat feet. I'm ignoring that for the time being because I'm just trying to get this to a tabletop ready standard. Um, I would say actually, obviously for the live show, Richard is going to be. This, the Pit Fiend is a CR20. I, I, I'm bringing in an Uber character. Yeah, absolutely. And we may have some assistance, but that hasn't been confirmed yet. But I definitely think the hour paint job is going to be nails, because the one we've got is huge. Uh, Lord of Cats, can you use Fireball in your mind to attack it mentally? Um, 
No. No, unfortunately, uh, you'd have to use uh, psychic spells like Mind Spike or Mind Thrust, and uh, depending on what publications you're playing on, um, Tasha's Mind Whip, stuff like that. And that's why psychic damage is a thing. However, uh, I think uh, Fireball has visual and somatic components. Um, plus, it's immune to things like fire damage. You need to use things like force damage or magical weapons against it realistically. Um, Dibs, I was like that with Skyrim and any Assassin Creed. I was so highly leveled that I was indestructible and killed anything with one hit. Took the fun out of it. Yep, yeah, it does. The trouble is, if, you, if I, as a GM, threw these kind of monsters at a level 3 party each week, they're not going to have fun playing D&D. And this is actually one of the things that we want to showcase on this show, is that, like, you don't have to fight your players. <laughs> you know, you can throw challenges at them, but... You want them to have things that are hard to beat and also some things that are easy to beat. So they have those moments where they're like, we're the fucking bomb. You know, and if they've leveled up in certain ways, you don't have to fight against that. You can play into it, but you can also be like, you've also leveled up one way. However, this character here is your fucking antithesis. So, yeah, it's, um, it's a bit give and take, really. I'm going to have a swig of my coffee. Right, I'm going to grab some orange, and then I'm going to go in on the base first. So I'm going to grab some Rise of Rust. This is a dry brush from Citadel. It's actually one of my favourite dry brushes because it's so heavily pigmented. How are you going to do your base? Are you doing it a standard stone? Are you doing it in a, a fun, demonic way? Uh, I can't remember if you, you, you've, got, you've just grabbed a single base, haven't you? Yeah, but I've covered it in slate dust and bits of rock so that I can... Mine, mine is literally, it's a, I think it's, it was either a misprint or from a, a set of misprint. Um, so it's basically just a bit of rock. So I might just do it as a, as a plain base. Nice. I might even go over it with a bit of um, AK Interactive uh, pigment dust. Oh, have you got some of that, have you? Yeah. That's oh. why right. I use it on the feet of um, Apocalypse here. Nice. So I've got a few pigment dusts as well, and I was planning on using one for this. <laughs> uh, I've actually got two different kinds. I've got the pigment paint, which is like a pigment dust paint that you can put on, and it works really well to seep into areas. And I've also got a few different pigment dusts. Some of them, are, I actually use the rust set from Green Stuff World, and these actually span from like an oxidized reddish brown all the way up to a light orange and... They work for so many different things. It's so good. So, uh, dude. Or you pit them against a few easy creatures so they think they're badass and then throw the beholder at them. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and actually, a great module for that is Waterdeep. Uh, because one of the crime lords in Waterdeep is a fucking beholder. And Waterdeep is set out to be a level one to five adventure. And the fact that I think the four main bad guys that you could possibly run into, one is like a fucking level 20 rogue, the other one is a beholder, the one after that is a, a ninth level spellcaster called Manshun, and the other ones are uh, Satan-worshipping cultists who can summon devils. And they are all fucking way more powerful than level five and the whole point of the module is that you don't actually have to fight something to the death you can run and you're supposed to like work around these like crazy ass monsters and people and it's just fucking nuts but i like that module i like it a lot and uh, i think for anybody running D, &D if you want to put these big creatures in Something that Waterdeep does is go. Uh, Waterdeep does that I think is really good, is that they say if your players get captured or TPK'd, they don't have to be killed. They can be knocked out. They can be dragged somewhere and then left out in a gutter, like you know, some lower bad guys. Like just throw them out the back and yeah. Um, did uh, Lord of Cats says just oh, after you, Rich. I'm saying, I hope, hope a friendly cleric comes along. Exactly that. Uh, just reminded me about my cat beholder. What? 
That sounds horrific. Imagine that, like, just like a cat with a beholder's like eye for its head, and then all of these eye stalks, and it just goes off like if you don't feed it or pet it right, it fucking disintegrates you. Uh, you just described the clientele of most of pubs in Cornwall. Yep. Uh, and Z says, "I'm sorry, a cat beholder. I need a visual." Jahan, Lord of Cats, get on it. I need Ungor flesh. Where are you? I'm right here, sir. Oh, I'm right here, Ungor flesh. There it is. So, something I like to do with reds is when it comes to highlighting them, you can use oranges, yellows, and flesh tones. And depending on the finish that you want, changes how it sort of looks. And I really do like using flesh tones for things like this, where it's a bit more faded. Lord of Cat says he'll post pictures later, but in the works of casting it. Hmm. I'm also gonna use a little bit of Jocado orange underneath it. So I've gone corn red, pure red, then I'm gonna go Jacaro orange and Ungore flesh. And that's gonna be the majority of my top highlights. And then I'm gonna try and work on that white sort of chest piece and the underside of the arms, and then the base. Uh, I'm at the point of, please fucking dry. Oh, you did it, you did it, please dry. I'm just too scared of using speed paints and stuff now. Well, I, 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 as I said, I, I mixed the contrast medium with the corn red because I wanted it. In, I wanted the nice sort of different layered tones over the body, so that when I come to dry brush, it adds a bit more depth to it. Yeah. But yeah, it's just the hope that dries, and also then to keep it wet, it meant going over the claws and teeth in a a contrast. Oh no! As that added blending. Yeah. Because with contrasts. They blend better. They do. I will say that. Um, I do enjoy a good wet blend when it comes to contrast paints and smooth. Or you like it moist, you know. Or you like it nice and moist. But one of the things I like about red is it's very easy to get depth. This is why I prime in black and then work my way up through colours, starting with a dark red and going from there because... Yeah. Pants bastard. Yeah. And... I know Richard can't see that, but it's the easiest colour to paint, I find, red. Because you only need a few highlights to pull out some... What is the colour theory? Not really. Uh... Lord of Cats, I wanted to get a VR scan of it so I could 3D print it. Ooh. Um, do you just have it, a whole universe that's very run, run by cats? I want to play there. Uh, Z, I converted it a lot of miniatures into cats. Yeah, J had a lot of cats, does a lot of stuff with cats. And, um. I'll test to that. I'm all for it. I love a cat. Got two of them myself. Taste great. But they are. No. Nah. Well, Those with pickles. <laughs> uh, what has it said? Uh, yeah, it's just a uh, chat asking. Lord of Cats, what their IG is. Feel free, guys, if you've got Instagram stuff, you can put them in chat here. Uh, you can absolutely share your own things here. We don't have a problem with that. We are all for building the greater community for the greater good. For the greater good. The greater good. So, yeah, you can put your Instagram links in there. I strongly suggest following each other because you're all fucking awesome. And we love you. Especially when we get Funko Pops made. Fuck yes. It was fuck, oh, genuinely when that came through, my fucking heart melted. Yeah, no word of a little bit much. Yeah, like I just like looked at my wife across from the table. I was like, huh. oh my <laughs> god. So, life made. Somebody did something artistic and sent it in, and I'm fucking made. All I've ever wanted. And not only that, ZZ's done like character art of all of the players' characters from Starfinder. Oh, I do love them. Yeah, it's just fuck, so good, and I'm. Yeah, it just it it's one of the best feelings in the world. So thank you so much for allowing me to feel those emotions. 
Right, so I now need to start hitting up different areas with some different colour. Uh, found you. Uh, my daughter wanted the cat for Christmas. I was slightly against the idea, as I prefer turkey. But hey ho, it's whatever she wanted. <laughs> Dibs. Yeah, that was good. I liked that. Um, I saw your custom pot figures. They were amazing. Yeah, they really were. Um, blown the fuck away. Mine lives in my kitchen where it's nice and dry and it will never get ruined. Uh, oh, you guys, listen. You guys have had a huge impact on me for the better and I want to give some good feels back. Z, take it. Oh, it was achieved. It was fucking awesome. Yep, yeah. yeah. uh, I, I don't know what to say, to be honest, um, because I was so blown away by it. Uh, I need to graze now. So I'm going to now try and come in and do that chest, the torso, the underside of the arms and the neck but we're going to start with something like a corax white maybe or an Arthurian grey let's see so what I, I went with a pale grey blue from Vallejo model car nice just, just to start with you know I'm going to have a look at my AK interactors I would have used turbo docks for this but I, I did the metallics two weeks in a row and I wanted to oh, you you went quiet there, you went quiet then. Sorry, I was saying I would have used turbo dorks, but um, I did metallics two weeks in a row, and I wanted yeah. like some either pastel colour or some regular. Yeah, I got a blue grey, I'm going to start with that. That'll contrast the uh, red and the oranges and the flesh quite nice. So, how do you find that when you have paint schemes like this where it's quite simple? And I know that you say that, like, I'm Mr. Colour Theory, and I'm really not. How do you go about the colour theory of this? How do you go, right, I think it's going to be this particular colour for this area? I try and... I, I, I looked at the picture and I tried to sort of build in my mind as to what I might want to do. But the problem is, is it's theory and practice are very fucking different. And I get yes. very frustrated with the fact that I, I can't... I don't have that colour and artistry sort of experience to be able to do it yeah so i also then think mine always comes out looking like dog shit so it's one of those things that i'm just going to try and make the best of it yeah fair enough i um it definitely is a you have to break some eggs when learning color stuff and it's hard i certainly find that like even right now i'm putting this on and i'm putting on quite heavy and i'm like oh god but then there's layers to go on top of it and a lot more to do, but yeah, it's scary. Well, it's one of those things, I still feel like I'm learning how to paint. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I, I, as I said, I do struggle with it a lot of the time. Sometimes I'm like, boom, done, yeah, fuck it, that's all right, you know, but then other times it's just like, mm, no. Yeah, and I think I that that's... I quit painting, I don't want to do it anymore. And I think that's completely acceptable. I think that like imposter syndrome is definitely a thing we all suffer from, where some days you're like, I'm a fucking god, and everybody should worship my painting. And other days, I'm like, oh, you run a channel, you piece of shit. You should be better than this. <laughs> and then I remember that we're trying to do this in an hour. <laughs> and although I say that, this is probably the most amount of painting I do in a year now. Yeah, so I still have. I still need to get myself actually regularly painting and doing painting new things because at the moment this is the most I paint. Yeah, which is a nice excuse to get to yeah. painting. But I mean, I was this week. I've done uh, apocalypse because I was trying to. Obviously, we got sent the turbo dog paint, so I was trying to do something to show off the turbo dog paints. Hence, why apocalypse has been done. And it looks good. Even so, it's, you know what, I, I, still, I, mean, I still struggle, I'm thinking, oh, that's shit. And then I did the hard coat and it's taken off some of the, the shit, and I'm like, Ugh. Yeah, so I, obviously you sent me some stuff out um, this week, that one of them is like for a paint challenge that we're going to be doing, which I'm really looking forward to, but it's well outside of my comfort zone. The other thing, obviously, you know what that is, I know what that is, we can't talk about it, but, no. obviously, like, I've got to paint that. Yeah, and that's the fucking <laughs> But at the same time, you can use the airbrush. Yeah, exactly that. So, and uh, as cryptic as that is to everybody else, it will make sense in the end. I promise you that. 
But, yeah, I can't talk about it because I can't. And, um... You're a rose. Yeah, like NDAs and shit. And I'm fucking terrified because I think whereas like I had time and I wasn't running the shows, I was painting for myself and like I'd spend like two days on a mini and then I'd be like oh cool put it up and it'd be like yeah and now I'm like shit I've got this to do I've got dice to do and then I'm painting for half an hour and I'm like smash on some paint go uh, so I really need to get back into a routine of that uh, sounds accurate then oh that's just chat bot uh, I've only managed to paint a couple of times this month divs yeah I, I get it like it's fucking time right it's almost like the four fucking dimensions there to kill us. Right, I need some Corax White! So I like Corax White. It's a base paint that's quite thick, but... It does bring out some pop when you uh, use it as a dry brush. How are you getting on? I've just slathered the base with a grill and earth. Oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> some of that real sloppy sort of sand and mush. That's going to take forever to dry. <laughs> it's fine, it means it's all covered, so I don't have to worry about it. <laughs> right, I need a very fine dry brush now. So, let's try and get this looking a bit more bright on those muscles and that front. So has anybody at home ever used a Glabrezo in their campaigns? Has anybody got that far along that they have thought about using one? Do you use demons and fiends? Do you use them as one solid thing like Richards, do Richards? Richard does? Or do you leave them out and leave it just to be standard monsters and stuff? Yeah, Richard likes to make things complicated for himself. Yes, he does. Yes. Yes, he does. So, that's the starting build-up of the white. But now I need to pull out the face and those horns. And we need to change the base colours so that they also now pop out a bit more. But that's what the pigment dust is going to be for. You've got 26 minutes, Richard. Uh, sorry, I meant this day. All I do is paint. Dibs, that's fucking... Do it. Nothing better to do but get to it. Right, I want some brown. What brown do I want? I want. What kind of colour are those fucking horns? Uh, I went with a tiger brown and contrast. I just. It's worked, out, it's worked out quite nicely. As soon as I open the contrast paints, I'm gonna fuck it. I know it. They're quite reddish purple, really, aren't they? I might go with like right. a dark stone grey on all of the claws and the little spikes and then dry brush on some tan colours, maybe. Let's fucking go rogue. <clears throat> so, something dark stone. You know what happens every time you go rogue? Sneak attack, mate, innit? In it, bruv. In it, bruv. Sneak attack, mans. I'm a rogue man now. <laughs> I think I could be the furthest possible thing from a roadman. Right. Press to seal. So, actually, this is something I want to talk about. Um, I tend to always dry brush with kitchen roll. But Richard has a few different techniques for different applications. Would you like to describe those to the good people? Dick Daniel. Uh, Richard tends to use um, the... I, have, I now have dry brush palettes um, for a sort of a smoother uh, look for the dry brush um, and a slight um, <laughs> I have a moist sponge that I dab the brush on beforehand because you want a little bit of moisture in there to keep it all looking good or if you want it that dry chalky sort of dry brush you go for the dry a completely dry brush and kitchen roll to pull out the moisture from the paint Yep, and you get slightly different effects depending on like the tissue paper or the paper or... Yeah, or, or you can use um, paper or what I find is the back of a pad where it's <laughs> the glossy paper tends to do a, a good thing as well. 
So, yeah, I nine times out of ten, I change the wetness of my brush, but I find that changing the paper styles can really make a difference. You might find different things that you like, and that's something I learned from Richard. I'm trying to dry this now. <laughs> Hello, Herbalist. Welcome back to the show. Great to see you back on Twitch, actually. Congratulations on the 198. You're close to the 200, I believe, which is fucking awesome. So if you don't already follow Herbalist, please go follow Kim. She is an author. She is a miniature painter. And is ever so close to that 200. these claws done. Let's grab those ones there. What I do like about this mini, Richard, is that all of the details are really easy to get at with a large brush rather than something really fine. So I think the sculptor's done an incredible job on that. Sorry, I think he's muted himself because he's using the airbrush. But, so that's those bits of claws. And we've got the ones just on the chest here. We're going to grab those ones and we're going to paint those that dark grey as well. And I'm hoping this will help the darker bits stand out against... <clears throat> that red and the orange and the flesh colours. We're not having it in a mini holder because it's such a large creature, but we're making do. Miss Lounge, how are you guys doing at the moment? Anyway, I know that I've uh, seen the new intro and tried to uh, get into some of the episodes. Again, time being the main issue. How's your Twitch following going? Again, people should go check them out. They are awesome dudes. Radical shows. A lot of content out there now, which is fucking awesome. Let's grab. So I'm not sure how I'm going to do the teeth and the face yet. And I really need to start thinking about it because we've got 21 minutes left. So, let's grab. Uh, amazing, working my ass off on the new studio. Yes! How's it going? I mean, have you managed to get, like, walls in and stuff? Have you got cameras in? I, last I spoke, I think we were talking about lighting, and you were trying to get some lighting in. And Herbalist just primed their orc. Yeah, I got mine zeniths yesterday, and... I think I'm going to leave pauldrons off, but I'm going to paint one and then maybe blue tack it on afterwards to see if I like it, because I want to see the check pattern, but... Aldrin props for the win. Yeah, I was, I just, those shoulders are too fucking nice. Yeah, they're <laughs> too beautiful. Yeah, and all will become clear on that one, um, I think in the next couple of days, for uh, Kim, Richard, uh, Craig from Dragon Skull and I, as we're gonna be, yeah, painting up a very similar model a crazy size and just seeing how we all do it differently really what color are the eyes on this bad boy but bear in mind it won't be an hour challenge we're gonna have a month or so to do it. yeah yeah this is gonna be in our own time and then do social updates uh they're cool as fuck uh, electric all done working on soundproofing like mad it's been a constant learning process and things that worked before don't now it's lots of thinking on the run. That is exactly how we did things here in this studio and how we're still doing it. And um, yeah, uh, I hope you don't have to worry about mice because you live in a field uh, that chew on wires because uh, that's something I have to worry about. Uh, right, red eyes, red eyes, red eyes. I really want these to pop, you know. Oh, but you can barely pick and see them. Yeah, I know. I can get them. Here, the eye sniper. <laughs> Only snipes eyes. <laughs> the inoculator. Uh, in 
never ends. No, we have frogs. Um, oh, I fucking love frogs. I genuinely was working on a piece of art last night that made me write something into our Starfinder campaign that is frog adjacent. So keep your eyes peeled because I'm going to merch the shit out of it. God, they really did give us many tiny beady eyes, didn't they? Yeah, I'm not going to fucking try it. I am. Got it. You got it? Yeah. Of course well, I don't have to fucking do it now, you bastard. Do you know your friend here? What's that? Dental goggles, and I wish I had mine up here. Mm. How are you doing those teeth as well? I've literally just glazed, gone, you know, gone over slightly with the dry brush. Yeah, I think that's what I'm going to have to do as well. I might use that um, Corax wipe for it as, uh, as well. Yeah. Uh, who doesn't love frogs? Uh, Escort. I don't know that one. Is that TJ's new wife? Uh, no, Dibs. But I like, the, I like that you know this. Um... I like that people know the show. Uh, I look forward to some stuff that I've been working on and reveals for, especially TJ's story. I fucking can't wait. Uh, this was please kind sir, Ribbit. Hops in your garden direction. I get peed on a lot. Uh, we have a swamp out the back. What kind of frogs do you get, Miss Lounge? Are they like bullfrogs, like the huge ones? Uh, frogs, or are they, oh sweet Jesus, there's a frog of football? <laughs> I love frogs, I really do. I like frogs, but the problem is I've got a bad memory of a frog, a frog walking down a dark alley um, in, a in, you. In, our, in my area. Bit of a dodgy area, I think I'm going to get jumped, and a fucking frog jumps up <laughs> and spins it. <laughs> oh, yes! Oh, that's amazing, and I love it, and I fucking wanted to see that so badly. Never have I got to chat to myself so thoroughly. Oh god, that's amazing. Ah, oh, I love stuff like that. I, I genuinely like the other night as well, like mid Starfinder when we were on our little break. Alex went up to the toilet in the house, and I, I did a creep thing, and um, I went and basically stood with my nose to the door, knowing full well that all the upstairs lights were off, and how oblivious he is to his surroundings a lot of the time. And I literally just waited for him to open the door again, and I was just stood there face to face with him, and he was like, because ah! he literally, okay. he literally opened the door and turned the lights off at the same time. So it was just like the last thing he sees is just me nose to nose with him <laughs> <laughs> as he turns the light off, and it was fucking great. <laughs> yes, I'm a bastard like that too. Uh, Toads and bullfrogs and little green guys. Oh, I love it. Yeah, I, I love amphibians like that, and, you know, we've got axolotls, and... I say we. My eldest has got an axolotl. He's got two of them. We got them, really? We've got 14 minutes. How are you getting on? Yeah... Dry brushing some of the red on. I should be tabletop. Yeah, I think I'm tabletop. I just need to finalise a few little details. Trying to put that flesh tones back on in the right place so that I can cover up any mess that I made with the white. But then I need to dry brush the claws with a little bit of tan along with the horns and then I want to put some brighter colours on the base just to separate because at the moment I'm all blended into one with the base and the mini so now I really yeah. want to pick out the base ever so slightly differently and I think I'm going to grab some XV88 
if I can find it. There it is. Uh, oh, somebody's talking about snakes. Making me homesick again. I miss slow worms too. Uh, oh, yeah. I used to catch slow worms as a kid. Slow worms are great. I, uh, yeah, we get to see them down here. It's awesome. And lizards and stuff. Uh, I'm assuming Mist Lounge gets snakes out the back then, if people are talking about snakes, but I can't see the comment. But snakes, they're not for me. I'm not a fan. Not gonna lie. I'm not the biggest lizard fan myself. I, I don't mind lizards, but snakes are just waiting until they're bigger than you. Yeah. It's that age old story of the person boasting that the snake slept next to them every night. Yeah. yeah. It was just waiting till it was big enough to physically eat him. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. We do and we are not friends. What kind of snakes do you get? Because last time I was in Canada, they were fucking rattlesnakes. Granted, I was in Alberta in the summer. But it was enough for me to be like, you know what? I'm I good. Thought they were yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm good. I'm going to leave those alone. I don't want them anywhere near me. And I imagine since you've got swamps and stuff, it's like pythons and shit. Gardeners and rattlesnakes, yeah. Um... Corn snakes. Corn snakes are okay. He, I'm the, I'm oldest brother had pet snake. My oldest brother had pet snake. I'm sure that's meant to say. Um, yeah, I just corn snakes are all right, but I just snakes need like thousands of miles to roam around and have territory, and we put them in little boxes. So I'm like, you know what? Yeah. <laughs> Let's leave them be. I mean, we get snakes here, but like, I don't see them. <laughs> Get like the adders and stuff, don't we? Yeah, so my dad got bitten by one when he worked at the school. I love living in the UK because we don't have venomous shit. <laughs> no, we have, we have venomous shit, just not venomous animals. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, the neighbourhood cats are good at keeping them away from... Oh, that's good. Uh, I miss my bearded dragon. I love a bearded dragon. Um... They are one of the most loving reptiles I've ever seen. I am a bearded dragon. <laughs> yeah. And I'm the dragon born bard, baby. So, let's grab. Ooh, let's, let's, let's brighten those oranges up on that red, shall we? On the base. With 10 minutes left to go, I definitely think I'm going to be tabletop ready. To change the dry brushing paper again. I wanted to get a jumping spider, but worried my cats will kill it. Uh, yep, exactly that. Uh, I used to have a bearded dragon too. I called them Dave and Lister. Nice! Uh, yes! Oh, I love my bearded dragons. My bro has an iguana. Nice. It's bloody massive now. Yeah, they get big. Um, I lost my train of thought. I found a spider yesterday. Sorry, uh, that fucking jumped. Um, I don't mind spiders, and I fucking do. I, when I have the kids, I learn to pick them up and take them outside because I'd rather, you know, save them and not kill them. And um, I, they're not proper to live in my house. You step foot in human territory, you suffer the fuck. <laughs> I, on the other hand, will save any animal that comes into the house. I try to. There was one yesterday that looked like a fucking camel spider. It was it was Diddy Bo. And um, it quite literally had like this like silky back end to it, and like the front mandibles were really quite pronounced and dark brown. And all I could think about was camel spiders. I'd been party to being around, and I was just like, okay, I'm just gonna pick it up, I'm gonna take it outside, and I'm not gonna look at it. And it fucking jumped from my hand to my chest. And I was like, it's okay. No. I'm just gonna take it off. I took it off, put it in my hands, and I showed it to kids. And then I put it on the wall, and I went inside, and I shit myself on the inside. Yeah. <laughs> So that was uh, my little encounter with spiders yesterday. But here's a question for you. Would you rather have a wasp, well, wasps in this country the size of a car or spiders the size of a car? 
Uh, wasps. Okay, I'm the same. Why? Um, easier to kill. Okay, mine's because you can hear the fuckers coming. Oh uh, yeah, that that too. Because I, if it's like a spider, it's just could waiting. You imagine that, could you imagine that sound though? Considering the sound of wasps. <laughs> yeah. You're gonna think a fucking jumbo jet's on its way. Yeah, exactly. But not only that, is at least you know it's there, and yeah, yeah you'd be like. Okay, at least I know it's coming. And a wasp nest or a hive, you're like, all right, you know what? Nuke the country. It's fine. Spiders that big. One, they breed like fucking crazy. Two, you wouldn't hear it. You'd just be waiting. You'd walk outside if you take your bins out and you're like, why am I not moving? Oh, I'm in a spider web. I'm dead. And then this fucking arachnid the size of a fucking monster from Harry Potter comes down and it's just like, yeah, I'm going to paralyze you and eat you slowly as I turn your guts to liquid. No, thank you, sir. I say to you. Off your yeah, uh, but I agree with Dibs because Dibs says uh, spiders, they don't want us, wasps are arseholes. Correct, but a spider that big, we become a fly to it. So we just have to walk into its lair and yeah, uh, ZD, be gone, she love, and uh, it will smash through your window. Uh, and you can tell, Richard, I finished another one, the warrior angel thingy. Celestial. You know the you know our Celestial from uh, Luke Studios in one of our first episodes? Yeah, the, the ones that we're totally going to paint up again. Totally. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, Dibs has got a 75mm one. Really? Yeah. Oh, dude, Dibs, post some pictures when that's done. That's fucking awesome. That's one of my favourite ones so far. So I'm running off away from the camera because I want to grab some pigment dust. And I... Lost what I've done with it. Where are you? I bet I've left it over by the Star Wars stuff. So, let's grab. Yeah, there it is. I might, do you know what? I might have to do yellow eyes. Just so, so it pop it out. Pops, so it pops up, uh, up against the red. Yeah, fair enough. So, what I'm hoping here is these are the, oh, these are the Vallejo, not the. Um, Green stuff world. So these are the Vallejo rust ones, and I'm going to do some uh, brown oxidizing, and then I'm going to use a new rust, which is like a faded orange. And this stuff goes everywhere. There is a new movie called Sting that is black widow that grows into the size of a dog. Fuck that. Hey, has anybody here ever seen a, 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 black, a black widow? A black widow in real life? Because I fucking have. And that shit is so small, yet so fucking scary to be around. You're like, you know what? I'm good. That thing could kill me. Um, not really, unless you mean the size of a car, not including the legs. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, like Skyrim style, big fucking spiders. Uh... I gotta show uh, my kid your Deadpool dips. They just got a mini Deadpool bus from Rich. Yeah, uh, that was a cute video. Uh, UK has false black videos. Yeah, uh, we get brown recluses in this room all the time. Uh, chances are they're not gonna fucking bite you um, unless you're sticking your arm into a nest of them and they've got eggs there. But the brown recluse is, um, it looks cool, but it's uh, its a dick. It's not even that, it's like, the, we've had them for years, it's only thanks to media that uh, people are so scared of them, but they are an interesting thing to look at, because they look like they've got a skull on their back, like on their uh, web fucking back end bit that I can never remember the name of. Your arsehole. <laughs> His arsehole's all covered in skulls. they got a goth booty. Oh, it's the yellow first. Oh no! On oh, the wet palette, it's everywhere. So I'm quite literally stippling on all of this darker dust at the bottom, and then I'm going to essentially blow the dust back off again. But I'm going to blend that up into a lighter dust onto the bottom of the legs. I would normally, after putting something like a pigment dust on, use a matte sealer, but I probably won't for this particular tabletop ready but I do enjoy the uh, pigment powders a lot
especially because they can really set off a load of detail on your minis. Almost like a dry wash. So, three minutes. Good. Yeah. How are you doing? Still waiting for things to dry? Uh, yeah, of course. But I'm going to try and slap some stuff down on the base and try and get a black edge done. Just going to grab one of those middle tones as well, actually, now. So what I've done is I've managed to blend the light and the dark together, but there's still a bit more of a dusty area on those feet, and I now need to blend it back into the original oxidized iron. So I'm gonna take my slightly less dark iron, and I'm gonna use that as the intermediary color. But I very much like pigment dusts, although they are messy as shit. For example, if you get it on your fingers and then pick up your mini. Pigment dust. Exactly. Could be in the wrong area. You don't want that. I have a shit broken line, so. Oh, really? Uh, just going around the base. I've managed to get a bit of black on the bloody dirt. Oh, I can. Oh, yeah, it falls off the set. Uh, it's more like an hourglass. There's a moth that has a skull on its back, or is that what you were saying and I missed it? No, there's a, a false widow has a, um, an almost like a skull looking, um... That dip's trying to throw it Pardon? Is that dibs? <laughs> it is dibs, yeah. Yeah, the, uh, hourglass is the black widow, I believe. But the false widow... The brown recluse isn't necessarily, as far as I'm aware, the ones I've seen. An identical copy kind of thing. Well, that's why I got his name, False Widow, isn't it? Uh, some of it. They, they're a weird breed. I'm going to have to look it up now, because I know the ones we've got here are like a dark, dark brown. Bad, bad, Leroy Brown. Well, that was sketchy tabletop. I will do that one after the show because I realise I need to. Uh, just going to tap off any excess dust. I think I'm tabletop as well. That is. Oh, Dibs sent me five photos. Oh, that's awesome. That's the celestial. That's very cool. So, uh. I'm going to say I'm tabletop. I certainly could definitely put this that one down. How are you doing? Uh, yeah, I'm literally just dry brushing a slight sort of bit onto the cores. And I'm well, well and truly tabletop. So the base is literally mostly pigment dust now, which separates it all, all out. Uh, then we've got that grey, blue, white underneath. Then the face, I wonder if I can get close to show you. Because this face is tiny compared to the mini. is really quite small but we managed to try and get all the right areas in and i wanted to kind of pale off the red so that it was matching its environment to an extent but yeah, yeah again where you dry brushed up from the black I, I, I say it every time i fucking love it and every time i fucking don't do it yeah uh dry brushing red is one of the easiest things i find to do and gives you a depth that is more than acceptable. But yeah, so that's mine. Richard, how are you getting on with yours? Look how bright that is. That's awesome. Problem is the lighting doesn't help with the bloody... And the fact that I can't sit there. I love the face as well, man. It's very, very awesome. I got some pictures of that later. Yeah, I want to try and get inside the claws a bit darker, but I'm, I'm happy with that for a tabletop ready mini. This whole, like, sandy dust pit like we were fighting in. But, um, Dib says, I agree, reds and greens are wicked to dry brush. Yeah, they're, they're one of the easiest things to get through. I think they're probably some of the easier colours to do. But, tabletop ready in one hour, would you say it's doable with the gl glib raise you? Really? Do. 
I agree. I think it's completely doable. We will get some pictures of this and put them out on social medias after the fact. But thank you so much uh, once more for joining us for Painting Up the Monster Manual. We're back next week with the... Um, uh, it's a big one. It's the... Um, Goristero, which is... Oh, the, the, the yeah. second big one. Yeah, so Richard's printed a huge one of these. And these are, like, fucking insane. It's absolutely nuts. I mean, it's a CL-17, so Richard, feel free to roll up something higher. Um, yeah, go for yeah I'm, I, I, might go, I might go for something big and chunky. Go for a level 15, because this thing hit hard. And, um, yeah. Uh, Div says, before you go, dot, 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 with a double ellipsis. Uh, no, Divs! Um, says ZZ. But, guys, yeah, thank you so much. Um, I love seeing you here each week. I can't believe we've got a live show coming. Um, yeah. Uh, what do you guys do when you're not on here? Do you guys have some kind of business? Well, Richard definitely has a business. He's a Warrior Prince 3D, who you can find him on Etsy, on Instagram, at Warrior Prince 3D. You can find him uh, here on Dragon Ball Industries, on Band of Badgers, and on any local street corner, where he, uh, if, if it can be 3D printed, he'll do it. And, oh boy, he'll do it. And he'll do it for cash, because he loves it, and I I'm can... Yeah, I actually cannot wait to show you something that is incredible. I got it this week that isn't the orc that we're going to be doing, and I'm not allowed to talk about it yet. I'm so excited. As for me, I'm Ian the Dragon Ball Bard. Uh, I run Dragon Ball Industries. This is here, this Twitch and YouTube channel where we make dice, we do some mini painting, we run a Starfinder campaign, hopefully soon we're running a 5e campaign, we do painting up the monster manual along with some other just hangout paint shows and bits and bobs. And yeah, you can find us uh, with some merch at www.dragonballindustries.com where there's painting up the monster manual merch, there's Starfinder merch, there's regular merch, we've just released shoes, which are really fucking comfy. Um, we've had some in the family for a few months and it's like, damn. But yeah, um, guys, thank you so much. Um, I hope you all have a fantastic rest of your week. I'll be back on Monday for, uh, for Starfinder. And may those dice gods be ever in your favour. Take it easy, guys.